everyone, this is Derringer2k8, and this is Doodle God the Review. Let's get right into this. Alright, this is Doodle Gods by JoyBitsCo.Limited, a game where you combine elements to create even more elements that you can then use to combine into even more elements to create your world, solve puzzles, create artifacts, enter tournaments, or complete quests. This game is very reminiscent of the mobile game Alchemy, where you combine elements as well, but Doodle God expands on that idea quite a bit. You can definitely tell that this was a mobile game first and foremost. Since the interface was obviously designed for touch, you can expect a ton of clicking everywhere. I don't consider this an issue with the game, as it's a port for mobile. Just be prepared for a ton of clicking everywhere. You can also use a controller, which worked very well and I actually preferred it over clicking. A few leftovers happen as well. In the tutorial, the tip says tap here instead of the usual click here for PC games. It's a pretty trivial thing though. Another is the daily login bonus, which is pretty standard for mobile games, and the dreaded in-app purchases, but we'll get to that in a bit. Some of the things Doodle God has included to keep people engaged are leaderboards and achievements, both in-game and 22 for Steam. There's also a competitive mode that you can play against other people. As far as options go, there is an option for a kid's save version that you can protect with a pin, and there's also an option to upload your save to Steam's cloud, and then download it to another device and continue your game. However, I did not try this feature out. Since the entire point of the game is combining elements, when you do combine something, there's a small bit of fanfare and they provide a witty quote. Sometimes it's a famous quote, sometimes it's something they made up. One small touch that I liked is that for every element you create, the game provides a button that opens up the relevant Wikipedia page in a separate browser window. There are five different modes of play. Main game, quests, artifacts, puzzles, and tournament. A small warning, there are minor early game spoilers coming up. The main game gameplay is about combining four elements, earth, air, water, and fire to start, which create other elements to populate your world. As you combine different elements together, you create even more. You can create many more categories than just the initial four that you start off with. I combined earth and water and it made a swamp, and then showed my planet and where the swamp was placed. After I did that, I had a mission pop up asking me to create the clay element for a reward of coins. You can create multiple elements from just two. I made steam and stone by combining water and lava. There is an encyclopedia that keeps track of everything that you made and how you made it. If you start just randomly clicking with no luck, it pops up offering a hint. There are multiple types of hints with limited uses. For example, when clicking on a hint, it pops up an element that you can create, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. This at least gives you an idea of what there is to make. I tried a hint and it said beer was something. I had alcohol and wheat available, so I combined those and I made beer. This is pretty much the main game. You create elements to populate your world. There are different eras that you can advance to. You start off at the beginning, then technology, modern world, and finally, the magic world. The quests mode is basically the same thing, except you have an objective to create. You have unlimited uses of the specific elements that it gives to you, just like the main game mode. The first one is creating presents for characters from pop culture and history. I won't spoil who they are, but you can click on the gift button and it'll show you who and a tiny hint of what they want. As you go about creating it, you'll see a quest progress number. As you create relevant elements, the percentage increases. When you create one of the gifts, the icon will show gift wrapping around it. It'll pop up a little message with a quote from said character. The puzzles mode also gives you an object to create, except this time you have limited uses of what they give you. If you start with one fire and you combine it, you lose that fire unless you're able to create another one with what you have. Be warned though, because of this, if you create something and the percent does not increase, you'll need to undo that action as it's not something needed and you consumed the elements to make it. You can get to a point where you cannot complete the puzzle if you aren't paying attention. The only reason I discovered this is because I decided to use a hint and it popped up saying that the puzzle could not be completed in its present state. Thankfully, the game will let you undo everything all the way to the start if you need. You should always check the progress when you make something new though to avoid the slight annoyance. It's really the same as the quests except the puzzle is about using what they give you properly as you lose the elements after you combine them. The only issue with this mode is that because the percentage rises as you complete the appropriate elements, all you have to do is combine something and watch to see if it rises. If not, then you undo that try and try another until you see the percentage increase. You could just do that constantly and ruin it for yourself, while also making it trivial. At this point, I had a, do you like our game, rate it, pop up appear, 
There was a typical mobile please like pop-up, and I didn't appreciate it, especially on the PC. If I enjoy your game, I'll certainly rate it. I don't need to be reminded. This only happened once, though, and I don't know if it'll happen again, or if it's just a one-time thing. The next mode is Artifacts. This is going to have a spoiler for what the first artifact is. The reason is that this mode isn't initially clear with what the object is. The presentation made it difficult at first. You have a large bookshelf with a bunch of locked artifacts. At first, there is only one. You choose that, and you have to pick from a list the correct combination of elements to create that artifact. The first one looked like a trophy made of glass on a wooden base. It was called Mysterious Stone. So I naturally chose the glass, the stone, and metal as it looked like there was a metal band around it. It wasn't correct. So I tried earth instead of stone, or metal, and I just couldn't get it. So I chose the hint that got rid of 50% of the elements, while leaving the required ones alone. Still nothing made sense. I used the same hint to further reduce them again, and nothing stayed that made any more sense than what I used. I eventually got down to two elements, stone and a beetle. Yeah, living things are considered elements. So I was confused for a moment. How can this work when I need three elements for a glass trophy, and the only elements I have are stone and a beetle? So I just added three stones, and that was it. The artifact was actually Stonehenge. The glass trophy I thought it was is actually just a silhouette of Stonehenge, which is mounted as a little trophy. The base and the little stand behind it weren't actually part of what I needed to make. Now that I know this, the rest of the artifacts will be a bit easier to work with. The final mode is a tournament mode. As you play, you collect coins, which you can get by completing the missions in the main game that I mentioned earlier. I didn't play in a tournament, but there were 10 hours left for this one, and there was a leaderboard for it. It costs one coin to enter. There are five tiers of rewards. Every one gets five coins. Being in the top 20 gets you eight of the lowest type of hint. Third place gets you nine of another type of hint. Second place gets you 10 of another kind, and first place nets you 15 of the best hints. These hints are what you buy in the in-app store. All right, I mentioned them, and now I'll finally talk about them. The dreaded in-app purchases. The first thing I'll get out of the way is that these are not required and are completely optional. The second thing is that you can actually turn off the in-app purchases altogether in the options. This is a welcome change. The purchases are the hints for the game as you play. For example, one of them will tell you what element can be created, but it won't tell you what you need to do to create it. Another one will just outright create a random element, while the last one will tell you that you can make something from two element groups. So that means it'll tell you that there is something to be made if you combine elements from, say, the Earth and Fire group. You can also pay to disable repetition, which is if you try the same combo that made something before, it'll do the animation like you just created it, even if you already did it. If you're paying attention to me playing in the background, you'll see that I did that all the time. You just end up getting click-happy, and you click the same things multiple times. And if you get tired of seeing the same animation play, you can just pay to turn it off. The good news is, everything in the store is 99 cents, so it's not going to break the bank if you decide to grab some hints or turn off the repetition permanently. You also don't have to worry about not ever being able to use any hints if you don't pay. You get plenty for free, and they generate over time. Overall, I went from a, this is cool, this is kind of boring, to, I need to stop playing, but I'm sure I can create just one more element. And another one. Just one more, I promise. Not quite the same level as one more turn from Civilization, but I think you know what I'm getting at. For $6.50, you're getting a game that looks good, the music is good, and it can be a game that you can put down for a bit and always come back to. There's a ton to do, and you don't have to spend a dime on the in-app purchases. I'd recommend this game for people who just want something to do and don't plan to spend hours playing a game. The biggest negatives would be the amount of clicking you have to do if you don't have a controller, but that's to be expected because the game comes from a mobile background. Another issue is the possibility of breaking one of the puzzles on the very first combine and not noticing and having to undo all the way back to the start. Some people might get frustrated to have to do that. The last issue would just be the issue I had with the artifacts, not realizing what it was I had to make. That's just a visibility thing, and it might only just be me. And now, it's time for the definitive answer. If puzzle games are your thing, definitely buy this game. Thank you for watching everyone, leave your comments below, stay tuned for more reviews. This is Derringer2k8. You see, Joan, I was that giraffe. Wow, so if you were the giraffe, 
who was that little girl? Good night, Joan. Good night. <laughs>